Okay, so welcome everybody to our weekly diamond roundtable. I opened it up to actually the all of these Onation diamond leaders today. So um, we have our very special guest, my dear friend Lauren Duke. Um, we actually spoke at Summit together two years ago, was it two years ago, 2014, right? I'm all confused. Um, with our challenge group um, segment, it was amazing. We had a great time. We got to know each other. She's super funny and like a ray of sunshine. So <laughs> you guys are going to enjoy this call. So here's a little bit about Lauren. She is a superstar diamond, which is amazing. She did it really fast. She's a four-star diamond in her second, right? Mm -hmm. um, she's married to Chris and they have two kids Taylor 14 and Jackson 12 they have a schnauzer named Remy um, they, like she said she lives in Florida in the panhandle so it is a little chillier up there um, her husband's in the military so they've been uh, moving around a lot for the last 15 years they've moved 12 times um, and unfortunately her husband's going for a long deployment when very soon right um, he leaves the beginning of January. I don't know why the military does this. They're like, hey, so we're going to throw in some training, and instead of doing it now so you can join your family, we're going to do it the three weeks leading up to you being gone for a year. Good? Oh and we're just like, no. So he'll be gone three weeks, come home a week, and then deploy for a year. Wow. So it's, it's really changed the way I'm approaching next year. And that's one of the questions that you have for me, so I get to talk about it. Okay. Um, so, well, I'm sorry about that. Um, Success Club 10 All-Star Legend, which obviously we all know success leaves clues. All the top coaches hit Success Club. She was a top 10 coach in 2000 and... Well, what is it when you hit it in 2013, but you get all the fun yeah, stuff? So <laughs> Top 10 in 2013, and with this year, which I'm sure she already qualifies, she'll be a three-time elite. Um, and then she's, I don't know, when did you sign up? Um, it was the last week of June, 2012. It was at Summit. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So now let's get started. I'm going to, we're going to do question and answers. And then, um, some of the, what was that? <laughs> it was a man. Yeah, it's a man. Um, okay. So question number one, and we're going to go back and dig a little bit into her story. So how did you get started with Team Beachbody? Um, not a lot of people know this about me, but I um, was a coach and then quit. And um, it wasn't the right timing. The, the, my coach, who is still my coach, I signed back up with her again. Just Why not? Um, she approached me because I had been sharing about P90X and running and how great I felt. And I was helping other people. I didn't know about the coaching opportunity at all. I just knew that I was doing this program while my husband was gone and it was helping me with my running. And so she said, oh my gosh, you're in the military and you're sharing. Why are you not a coach? I remember her sending me Shakeology samples. I never tried them. So <laughs> I was that dork, that loser person that you just are like, really? this is why I charge for samples is because people don't ever get back to me. Um, so I became emerald like that. You know, I shared with people, others who knew about Beachbody, but then my husband deployed again. And we were living in California. We'd only lived there six months. I didn't know anybody. And I just was completely overwhelmed. So I said, now's not a good time. Um, I'm going to go to the gym. I mean, all of the things I've heard, I was that person. So um, I quit, but my coach did something smart, and she didn't even know she did it. She kept me on the team page. And so I would still get the notifications when I randomly checked Facebook and um, a girlfriend of mine who had, we'd been going, we'd gone to college together, we sang together at Baylor and um, she was posting from Summit and I, I don't know why she popped up on my newsfeed. We hadn't had any interaction. I just think it's God. Um, she was posting about how much she missed her kids how incredible this event was, tears, 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 talking about life changes and, um, you know, families being able to be restored and out of debt, all the things we know about as coaches, right? And I was just like, okay, I can totally, you know, sign up for that. Where are you? I contacted her. Her name's Whitney. I said, is this the Whitney that 
you know, we sang together at Baylor. She's like, yes, girl, you need to be here. And I'm like, whoa, I'm not that spontaneous. <laughs> My husband had only been home a week. And a little backstory, he said, you need to quit your job. We're moving. And I don't know when. And I said, well, I can't do that to my students as a music teacher. And I, so I quit. And then he said, change of plans. We're not moving. And I said, I don't have a job. And he's like, you are going to drive us crazy. Go work at Starbucks. Do something because you are insane. And I'm like, what am I going to do? And literally like that day, there's Whitney, you know, sharing about Beachbody. And so I kind of had some knowledge about what Beachbody was from before, but I didn't understand the heart of it. And that was the real clincher for me. It wasn't just sharing P90X and making a bunch of money and saving because I'm military, which was how it was thrown to me the first time. You're military. You get a free membership. Here's some Shakeology, and you did P90X. I needed it to go deeper than that. So I signed up on Thursday with Brazil butt lift thinking it would help me with my running and which it did and I drove to Las Vegas by myself across the Mojave Desert I'd never been to Vegas I didn't know anything about it I had a cool dress for my birthday I brought that knowing nothing I slept on my coach's couch in the signature hotel she woke me up at 6 a.m. I driven seven hours because there was a traffic jam and I spent the next 24 hours seeing Greg, or Greg, Doug Fitzgerald, Tracy Morrow, um, Barbie Decker, like big names in Beachbody who were sharing their stories. So I got to see that a French literature professor could do this. I got to see that a football coach could have a great transformation. I got to see that a mom of six or seven kids who was really active in her church was an amazing coach. And I got to see a pastor, like people that I could connect with that were just like me. And so and then I get to see um, Richard, you know, O'Neill, Richard Neal, excuse me, win $250,000 or $100,000 with the Beachbody Challenge after losing over 230 pounds. So all of these things came together. And I'd only been there 24 hours. So my coach looked over at me at one point and she goes, your mouth is hanging wide open. You really need to shut that because I was just stunned at everything I saw at the heart of this company. And um, I left there. I hit, I, there were five or six days left in the month. And she said, you need to hit Emerald. You need to hit Success Club. So I did. And I've hit Success Club ever since and was diamond in 70 days. And just, I got it. You know, I understood and I never stopped. Like, Looking backward wasn't an option for me because I only wanted to be a part of that, of that community, of that environment, of that atmosphere. And so that's how I got started with Team Beachbody times two. <laughs> and that basically ties into the next question because you've already touched upon that there's something more about this business. It's not just our fitness products and pushing um, Shakeology, that there is more out there, like there's a deeper connection. And also that your big aha came at an event, which we all know that events are super powerful and necessary as coaches. Another big aha moment for me, because I was a big roadblock for myself. Like I got it, share, share, share. But I, I was holding myself back from going that one step further. And I remember distinctly, um, I felt like a fraud. I felt like a fake because I was posting all this happy stuff, but inside I had a real, I had just had a lot of crap from my past that was holding me back because I thought, okay. I've had this eating disorder. I've had this relationship, this horrible relationship with food, with exercise. And here I am trying to tell people how to work out. What a fake I am. And so I got to a point, um, and it was on my, my fitness page. And this was back when, like, you got a credit. Once you got 100 people, they gave you $50 to do ads and stuff. And um, so I did that. But I, I remember being like, I need to get this off my chest. And I didn't make a video because I didn't know you could do that yet. I wrote it out. I wrote out my story. I wrote out my eating disorder and how I'm working through it and I get it. And I understand that it's very difficult when you have this negative view of yourself and this relationship with food that's so horrible. And I really feel like that moment for me 
so many walls came, so many walls I built had came crumbling down and people were reaching out to me and asking for, for advice and help and saying, you're the first person who's had the guts to say that. And I haven't, and I felt so alone. Thank you. And so that was a really big moment for me because I got to see that I could share the ugly stuff and be more relatable. I could share, you know, the stuff that nobody wanted to talk about and people would um, be attracted, for lack of a better word, to that and they would see me as a real person and they'd want to get to know me. So that's why I don't wear makeup because <laughs> I'm just like, look, we're all the same. We're just, we look like this and then we have our glamour shot. So it's fun to have both. I agree. I agree that we, we have to find our own voice and, and be the real us. Like I remember my, one of my coaches of Elise, she has uh, someone in her downline that told her, why don't you, you need to dress up during the day. And when you make your videos and your pictures, you need to put on a cocktail dress and makeup. And we're like, what? That's not how we live real life. We're real people. We're moms. We work out. We do, maybe sometimes we don't shower until the nighttime. It happens and deal with it we're just human beings that have a story a past and i agree that we all have stories that we keep telling ourselves that hold ourselves back and through personal development that's really the only way you can smash through those stories and yeah. through yeah i agree um the personal development is huge and it took me a long time to get that because i was like i don't want to read a book yeah me too it's more than that it's so much more than that it is me too i mean not till this year did i embrace it because i needed it but yeah. i would dip my toe but not really like go all in with it so, yeah yeah you have to be ready um okay so let's get into the business so what can you tell us a little bit about the core activities that you engage in daily that have helped you grow your business the most um i will tell you one activity that i started doing and i taught my team to do this um whether they decide to do it or not is up to them but i'm kind of competitive and I don't like to see that day zero with success club very long. And so I front load my month and I have kind of a system that I work through. And our month flows like this on our team. And I try to keep that up and I have a calendar for our team. This week we're doing this. Say this is your desktop. This week we're doing this. Here's the link to the calls. Da, 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 da. You know, because I don't want them to be like, I didn't know where that was because it's right there. Yeah. Um, same with our leaders, you know, you're a diamond, you are leaders of your own teams. I give them the tools, but I expect them to then share it with their teams the way that they see fit because you reach that point in your business where you want to be the leader and you want to be seen as the leader of your team. And so your upline doing everything for you kind of creates this, who's the leader? You know, who do I, who do I go to? And we've, we've gone through that. But anyway, back to what I do. Um, Every day I show up in my challenge groups like you should. I, you know, interact, I post, I, I schedule my posts for my like page the night before. And whether or not you have a like page or a fitness page or not, that's just what I do because if I don't, I don't want that to go away. Um, I'm not sure where that's going right now with Facebook, but I'm going to keep it up because it is the way I grew my business. And so I will continue. I post inspiration, I have a flow to my day. Um, where I post recipes, I post something about what I did for my workout, whether it's a video, um, a graphic that I made with me in it to make it very personal. I try to make everything kind of a reflection of me. But what I do with my team is the first week of the month is always working on getting a challenge group going. That's just the way it always has been. It's working on getting everyone to success club before the middle of the month. So, you know, you've heard the 10 by 10 and success club by the fifth or whatever. I'm usually at success club 10 by the fifth of the month done because I want to spend the rest of my month focusing on my team on developing, you know, training for them on maybe having more random zoom calls. And I don't want that. Like, Oh my gosh, I don't have success club hanging over my head because when you keep doing those behaviors, you're going to get past 10, you're going to get to 20, you're going to get to 30, whatever. But the goal is always 10, like that's the minimum. And that's what I teach my coaches. The second week of the month, I do leadership. You know, we have a call like this, but he's actually gonna be on my call, so this is where I'm really well. Um, we have leadership, we um, you know, make sure we have that face time with each other, and like you guys are doing right now. The third week, we do a sneak peek. Now, 
this has evolved, you know, as our team has grown. A lot of people want to do their own kind of sneak peek. I mean, you might, we might have seen a lot of leaders do just one night, a Q&A, two hours live in your jammies, with your wine, with your coffee, with your hot cocoa, whatever. Or you could do a five-day sneak peek where you put people in a group. I like this way because it's, it's really interactive. And I kind of took it from the person who I assigned it to on my team because her heart wasn't in it. She said it was, it wasn't, and it wasn't a good reflection. So I break up the week, um, the five days, and I make live videos. And I'm telling you, it's like death on day one because I'm like, okay, it's Monday. My kids just left for school. This is coaching, okay? Because I want people to see it's real life. So I don't dress up. I show them what it's really like. I might make videos on the fly in my car. I'll be like, look, I have freedom. I'm going to go get a facial now. And I show them what coaching is like, but we also break it down into the meat. You know, we talk about on day two, what is a coach? And I have testimonials. And we go through um, the income. And I share about my income, which is always very uncomfortable. And then on Thursday, I do a, what is coaching? And I actually wear makeup. And I make a point to be like, I, may, I put makeup on for you people. So I need you guys to be here. I need you guys to take the time. We have had such a great turnover rate and you know, sign up rate from that because it's not just a stock video I grabbed from 2011. It's right now. It's today. You can see the Christmas tree in the background. You can see that it took the time. People connect with that. On day five, we're talking about signing up. How are you going to sign up? And then... Some may, might sign up immediately or some might wait until the first. So there's more success. Club. That's the success club that's getting into your challenge group. I start talking about my challenge group two weeks before the end of the month. And I just start saying, hey, guys, you know, we have great results in our challenge group right now. But it's time to um, for it's your opportunity to get into our next group. Are you ready? You know, I, I kind of throw it out there to them that way. I talk about how great we're doing, talk about how challenging it is, talk about the results that are happening right now. It's your turn. Um, and gosh, with January coming up, you can be like, all right, so you've tried the gym. How'd that go? I'm already having results. Why don't you join me? <laughs> I used to teach in a gym, and it, it was horrific. The January, like, influx of people who signed up to come to the gym, and they were gone home for two weeks, and then... <laughs> And here I am, they're coming up to me going, your arms look so great. What are you doing? I'm like, I actually work out at home with this program called Les Mills Pump. I'll talk to you about it after class. You know, so you have to kind of t think about that and talk to people that way. And there's nothing wrong with saying, how's the gym working for you? Because I've already been having results. So maybe a little cocky, but there you go. It's true. <laughs> So it, the week, the excuse me, the month flows like that. We have a, t a team call that I lead, but then I do a leadership call. I let my my coaches do their own thing within the team, and then I'll do Zoom calls. We're gonna do a power hour as a team tomorrow, um, and just like okay, everyone, grab your blanket, get your computer. We're gonna wrap this out for an hour because I'm sick and tired of you guys saying you don't have time. Yes, you do. We're doing it together. So. It's going to take an hour of my time. And that's worth it to grow my business, right? And to show my coaches how simple this is. So like I said, week one is getting your challenge group started. Week two is all about leadership. I also have a business coach um, whom I'm working with now to help me kind of talk through things. Because it's hard to talk to my leaders about um, things I'm dealing with because you're at a different level. And you'll probably you know, see that with your teams. Because um, I'm working on landing pages and a blog and events, and they're just like, ah, I'm not ready for that. I go, no, you're not ready for that. I am. So I need someone I can talk to about this stuff who's going to help me so that I can be a better teacher for you. So what I'm learning, I'm making videos for them to break it down, and they save the money on the business coach that I was able to spend to help them. So gosh, I talked a lot. <laughs> That was, that's really good. I love that. I mean, you're, I love the way that you flow your month. And it all works out because it's true. Once if you start your group in the beginning of the month, they're doing well, then most of your challenges are going to be ready to join a sneak peek. And yeah. it keeps flowing every month to month. month to well, month. and it's easy to have that. We, we did challenge groups. And so, you know, it was easy to have that conversation about week three because you yeah. go, hey, guys, as impersonal as it is, hey, guys, your Shakeology is about to ship. 
How do you like it? Oh, great. You want to be in this sneak peek and learn a bit, little bit more about coaching? It's totally, you know, like hands off. You just show up five minutes a day, interact how you want. Um, I'll share with you. It, it, it's no big deal. Like if you, if you let people know this is no big deal. This is just me sharing with you. They're like, oh, okay. I'd like to learn more. And if they don't sign up, you invite them again next month. You right. make sure that you keep up with them because they were interested at some point. So there you go. Yeah, you cannot forget about those people because like Lauren said, she was a coach and, and canceled because the timing wasn't right. So you never know when someone is ready to, to step up. So, um, so, so you talked about your weekly, your monthly flow of your team. So how do you actually promote your challenge groups? Where are you finding the people? <laughs> you said your like page has always been very important. Do you use Instagram? I do use Instagram. It's one of those things I'm constantly learning about, and it's starting to grow. I'm starting to have a little bit more interaction. I'm playing with things right now. My like page has been my bread and butter, and, um, you know, we talk about boosting posts and ads. If there's one thing that I boost, it's a challenge group invite. So I might do it twice a month. And I might throw a hundred dollars at it or two hundred dollars at it, and I know you're just you might be like ah, but think about it. Ten people sign up, that's made that money back, and you have customers. Like you have to think about investing in your business, knowing that it's going to come back to you. Because I had fifteen new contacts from one post, you know, and that was that was worth it to me. So. It's hard to share with someone that you've got to invest money if you don't feel like you have it. But then when you see it come back to you as your income from the challenge groups, from um, sorry, challenge packs, from that residual income with the Shakeology, it all makes it all worth it. So if you can set aside a little bit to invest in your business as part of your budget, it's totally worth it. So um, my like page is a big one. I do Instagram. Like I said, um, a big thing I did this time that worked really well was I did a blog post. I used, I have my own website, but the gentleman who created it, I don't like the flow of it. It's terrible. So I'm using Squarespace. It's simple to, to use. It's simple to learn. I actually made a video for my team. I can share it with Becky. Um, it's, it's so clean. It's so clean to make, um, to add pictures, to add, um, uh, text to add links and so what I did was and you, you've seen other people do it it's a new program coming out you guys we have all the information about hammer and chisel it's given to us in our coach online office so you take that you make it personal you add some before and after pictures you add the video from YouTube you add a form saying if you're interested in this here fill out your name what's your skill level you know what is your biggest struggle with food it goes right to my email it also collects their email through MailChimp and so when I want to send an email to anybody who's ever been in a challenge group of mine, I can go to MailChimp, I can create a newsletter for just those people. So I did that this last time and I reached more people I'd never, ever met before. I don't know where they came from, but they're filling out that form and I have their email now. So that was just a different approach that I would like to start working on because nobody knows what Facebook is going to do. You, you, you never know what they're going to allow or not allow or, you know, their algorithms, blah, blah, blah. But I can post this on my personal page. I can share all the information about my challenge group. I can share photos. I can share a video of me. I can share whatever and a quick link of here's how to order or here's how to contact me. And it's very personal, I feel like. And it's, it's, specific to me it's branding me so that's what I'm trying to teach my coaches to um, focus on is you are you you aren't Beachbody but you have this passion and so if you can stand out from other people do it it's called squarespace.com that's so important I mean so many things you said are important just the branding itself and knowing how you are not beach body I mean you have you bring something to the table and you gotta figure out what's your purpose in life align with your passion and then you kind of like determine your brand based on that that's how you're gonna find people who are gonna be willing to work with you it's so important um, I have I personally have been doing my life pages has been doing well for the last couple of years 
Um, I do Wufu links, and that's been a great way for me to collect email addresses, which I then take to MailChimp as well, and allows me to to stay in contact with these people that whether they buy or not, at least I have contact with them. Awesome. Yeah. And so when we did the big holiday thing, I took my whole customer email list and made a really pretty landing page with all of the graphics my assistant made, you know, and so it's, it's there forever. Um, say, say you have a challenge group and or challenge, hmm, you could even do challenge group posts that are emailed to people's email every day because you, if you don't want to do a Facebook group, there are so many things you can do. And, and what I had to learn was that it's okay to suck at it. And my, my business coach was like, okay, you're driving me insane because you want it all to be ready right now and you want it to be perfect and it's not, and it's okay. And you have to be willing to fail and suck and for the links to not work because it's technology. And I was like, but I want it to work so badly. She's like, of course you do. You want to keep moving your business forward, but you've got to learn how to do this right. So it's that constant learning and that constant, you know, failing on your, falling on your face and failing and being like, okay, so now I know not to do that. And it's not comfortable. And we all have to go through that point or at that time in our businesses over and over and over again in order to grow. And so um, that was kind of, you know, skipping the eight. Next year, it's all about my team, which, which it always is, but I'm willing to suck and to do these trainings and to provide information for them in order to make them stronger because it, it's hard to receive success and accolade from your own personal work and them not be there yet. And so I want to have as many elite coaches as I possibly can. I want to see them achieving their goals and their dreams and quitting jobs that are just sucking the life out of them. I want this for them. And if I've got to go through this crappy training and this falling on my face in order to give them these tools, great. Because it only benefits us all in the long run. And that's not the only focus, like my team growing, my volume growing, but it is a good one <laughs> because, you know, we have goals and dreams too as a family. And if I'm going to work a little bit harder in order to give my coaches that solid foundation and that um, security, that confidence, then I can. So, um, there you go. Awesome. Uh, I, I want to point something out. I, had a, I have a life coach and this week I still am struggling through issues with like my body image. And she said, I use the word perfect a lot and I see you used it a bunch of times too. I'm like really sensitive with words now. Um, she says that perfection is the lowest standard. So just allow that one to sink in for a while. I was like, whoa. Um, yeah. I think the key of what um, Lauren said is like implement. Not wait for the moment when you know everything is going to work, but start implementing and um, working with things and working through it and figuring it out because it's never going to be perfect. Things are always going to be wrong or, or there's going to be a glitch. You have to keep practicing and make it better every single time. And that's why she's successful because she works through those things and is always finding a new avenue, something better to share with her team. So let's talk about recruiting. That question always comes up. How do you recruit? <laughs> Where do you find the people? What are your best practices? Just share a little bit. I, that's a big, big topic. It's a big one. I, I kind of feel like we cover it in all of yeah. the stuff about, you know, a challenge group post. My, my last three coaches were from that invitation to Hammer and Chisel. They were just so excited about it. They were excited about what I shared in the sneak peek. That's how. I want people to get a, get a little taste of coaching. But um, the other big thing that people don't understand and don't think about, and I didn't either, is I've had people come back after three years you know, from the very beginning, and they're like, I've been watching you for a while, and I'm ready to do this coaching thing, or they were coaches, and they quit, and now they're ready to come back and focus on their themselves, and so you never stop having those relationships, even if they say no, and I think that's the big thing, is the door is always open, and when people, when I invite people, and you know, I, I contact them three times, that's what I teach my coaches to do, because they're like, how many times before I'm paying, I go, you know what, by the third time, you just kind of say, hey, Maybe this isn't the right time for you. I wanted to make sure that I'm doing everything I can to reach out to you so that you have all the tools you can possibly have in order to make a good decision. When you're ready, I'm here. 
and you don't like let them fall off the face of the earth. You keep up with them. When you think about them, you say, how are you doing? You know, how are your kids? I saw you guys on Facebook, beautiful family picture. I know it seems like a, it takes a lot of time. It takes five seconds to let someone know that they're thought of. And so there's that relationship. It is all about relationships. And um, we're going to, you know, like I said, have that big power hour. But I'm going to actually go through. I thought I had them right here. Oh, they're down there. I'm a notebook girl, and I save all my notebooks. So I have written names in these stinking notebooks for years, and I keep them. I am going to do that crappy thing and go back the entire way. And I will invite 500 people because that's just what you do. And I think that was the thing in the beginning that kind of pushed me ahead was somebody said, so you invite five people a day? And I was like, okay, five people a day, okay. And somebody else said, why well, do 10? And I was like, well, I'm gonna do 15 because I'm just competitive. And I wasn't gonna let someone beat me. And that was that 0.1% more than anybody else that got you to the next point. But recruiting best tips are be you, be real, and don't stop doing it. I have a coach who's just oh, amazing, like the best coach on my team, always a leader, sucks at recruiting. And she's like, why, why am I so bad at adding to my team? I go, I've never seen you invite people, ever. She's like, you're right. Why did that, why was that so hard? I said, you don't invite, you, you don't. You've had the same coaches forever, and they're consistent, but you're not growing. And you need to invite people to coaching more. And do it like once a week, twice a week. Share this opportunity until if you're blue in the face because, you know, I, I, I say it to my team all the time, and I actually did a post about it. I was up to like two because I couldn't sleep. I feel badly not sharing this because it's changed our family's life so drastically, and it's made me better from the inside out, not just physically, but emotionally, spiritually. Like Becky was saying, personal development, getting rid of the crap, you know, that I've held on to for so long. Who knew that a company named Beachbody could do that, right? And um, I feel badly not telling people about this because I feel like I'm hoarding it and keeping it to myself and I'm not allowing other people to experience it. And when I saw it like that, I was like, well, I have to share because that person needs it and that person needs it. Not because of the way they look, but because of their situation, because of things they've said. Like, oh my gosh, I'm just drowning in debt. I wish I had more time with my family. Oh my gosh, you talk about a lead-in. Hello, they see you running around, never showered, you know, at every kid's activity. Don't care what you look like. And that's, that's just that confidence that comes from investing in yourself and investing in other people and seeing the bigger picture. Like, it's not about being perfect, like Becky said, because there is so, no such thing. So... I can really start preaching, you guys. I can just really get going. I love it. <laughs> um, it just like with, with recruiting, it takes practice. It takes doing it every day. And I love that changing the, the perception of it. Like I can't, I, it, I owe it to this person to share it to them. I can't keep this to myself. If you guys sink that in and then take that approach, it's more like I'm sharing what it's done for me and it's improved my lifestyle. Even if it's a little change in your lifestyle, it's done something for you. It's helped you grow as a person. That's one of the things that I love to tell the coach prospect is this is such a positive company. We don't get that in corporate America. In corporate America, they just beat you down. Here, it's lifting everybody up. People want to be part of a team, have a culture, a sisterhood. You know, a lot of our, te our teams are full of women. It's a sisterhood. We work together. Women who uplift. Those are all positive things that you can tell your prospects. But you have to remove that fear of sharing. And who cares what they think? Who cares? If they, yeah. It doesn't matter. Who cares? You, what you're doing is practicing what you're going to say. You're, you're sharing your passion. And if they're not ready right now, you never know. Maybe they leave thinking about it and the seed was planted. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that, was, that was one thing was I had to stop taking it so personally when they said no, because they weren't saying no to me. They were saying no to the idea of having to do something more mm -hmm. or invest a little money in themselves, which a lot of people, if you're a mom and all you do is for your kids, and we, we run into that. People have literally taken themselves off the front burner and put themselves on the back and they've let themselves just like hate life and hate. I've heard women say, I hate my body. Oh, I know how that feels. 
I totally get it. You've got to take 30 minutes for yourself. And when they do and they start to have that confidence again, it's incredible to see that. And all you did was share something with them. People are willing to spend thousands of dollars on just their face. I live in a community like, hello, you guys are, I don't know, you guys are all over, but we live in a very, um, what am I, a stereotypical area of Florida, very, very wealthy. It's on the beach, on the beautiful coast. Everyone is, Mm, mm, mm. and they have a lot of surgery and stuff they're willing to spend thousands of dollars on their face but then everything else is saggy or they're willing to have a surgery but they're not willing to work and they want to look like us they want to look like us and I'm just like 30 minutes no 30 minutes in my home 30 minutes they don't believe it and they're not willing to make simple changes and but they're willing to spend thousands of dollars to get everything tightened and tucked and toned and I'm just like oh God. So, Jesus Christ, and it's and it's like temporary because it's all totally going to be temporary. Out of you have to go back. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Anyway, <laughs> I mean, if with these people, a lot of them are just some people are <laughs> never going to see it. But if you form them correctly and ask the right questions, you can break those things down, um, get them to see it. Okay, so thank you for that. So <laughs> one of the questions was, how do you balance your business, like? Uh, success club, challenge groups, business, leadership calls, while helping your team hit their goals? Um, I kind of feel like that was, I, I shared that in the monthly thing because I take care of child, I take care of success club early. And then I take care of my challenge group. This new one with hammer and chisel, I said, let's do it as a team. It's a new program. Let's learn it together. I'm kind of running it. I've already put in the the posts for each day, you know, the ones from corporate with the videos because people like to see that. I want to see it. Um, but I'm working on sharing meals. I'm encouraging everybody. So I, I like the team led challenge groups when it's a new program, but then I kick everybody out of the nest. I'm like, no, nope, I'm sorry. You're not going to be in my personal challenge group because you are very capable to do your own. And I, you know, I say it that way because I'm like, when are, well, when are we going to do our next challenge? Group? I go, when, are, when did you, when did you decide to do yours? <laughs> so you have to kind of have some tough love and be like, go, go, shoot, shoot. <laughs> So I, um, <clears throat> excuse me, somebody's asking us about a puppy because <clears throat> we were thinking about getting another one. He's like, <clears throat> anyway, um, so if I plan my month to take care of Success Club, to get my challenge group started, to do that daily and just check in first thing in the morning, share, you got a puppy for me? Oh, good. <laughs> um, and then. I open it up. I have a team page of leaders. Um, it's called Lord, It's called the fruits because you know I talk about um, our, our team name is Thrive. So we talk about thriving and growing and producing fruit, and that shows you that the tree is actually doing something that it's growing when it produces fruit. So we're the fruits. So anyway, um, we're also a little crazy. That that works both ways. <laughs> And I post differently to them. I give them challenges. I say, here's the information. Um, I give them the open forum. They can be like, hey, coach relations. Blah. Okay, well, let's dial it back in and let's find a solution. And we work together to, to kind of grow as leaders. So I have that page. I also have my personally sponsored page because we all know to get to elite, it counts on them. Like most of the effort has to come from personally sponsored coaches. So I talk to them a little bit differently. I give them a little bit more information than I would my large team page, which is my entire downline. Um, and so I try to find balance there. I, I do one-on-one -on -one calls with coaches who will take the time to show up. I, my, my business coach kicked me in the butt last month when I started with her. So it's been very new. She goes, why are you working with people who suck the life out of you? And I was like, yeah, that's a really good question. And I wish I had a good answer. It's because I'm a bleeding heart. And she said, well, here's what I do. I have a survey. And if people can't take two minutes to fill out a survey to just kind of give me some feedback and let me know how I can help them, then I don't need to invest in them either. And I was like, okay, but I don't know if I can do that. And she's like, you have to. You've got to stop working with the people who cannot even hit success club. Like they cannot even do anything to grow their business for it. And they're not involved and they're asking the same dumb questions you've answered 20 times. Why are you doing this? So it took that kick in the pants. So I do one-on-one -on -one calls for the people who 
hit success club and are enrolled and above. If you are not there yet, you are grouped into a group call because I figured those questions are going to be the same for everybody who is not yet at that certain level. They're working really great and I can be more one-on-one -on -one and personal and have that relationship with my leaders. So I, I honestly, Becky, I got away from that because I was doing nothing but calls the, the yep. year I got to it burned me out and people see you as a counselor and you have to straight up at the beginning be like I'm not a counselor this is not you're not gonna lie on the couch and I'm gonna fix your problems I'm not a doctor I'm me so if you have questions about your business we can talk about that but this is not a counseling session and I actually had one coach go well then what are we gonna talk about and I was like okay see you <laughs> been treating me as a therapist and not as a mentor you're not treating this as a business you're treating it as a venting session yeah so I, it took some you know thinking and some planning and just laying it out there and giving people what is it she says she goes people are dumb and selfish and I was like ew she goes no you have to give them step by step even our coaches even you know everybody a new coach she they don't know you have to give them step-by-step -step instructions. And then you have to tell them how this helps them. Why would I do this? Why should I hit Success Club? Because you tell me to? Well, I don't want to do that. Ah, so if you flip it and say, well, this is how successful people in our business grow their businesses. This is how they see their organizations grow. This is how they reach benchmarks. Oh, okay, okay. So now it makes sense to me. But if you just go hit Success Club, no. So. Um, I, I've had to find balance and because I am such a workaholic, I was working 80 hours a week and that's what you'll hear for top 10 is it takes that and it really hurt my family. And when my kids started making comments, I knew that something had to give the next year, my husband deployed for seven months. <clears throat> so I had to dial it back and that kind of goes into, um, you know, what am I going to do next year? I have to change things. And I, I started when I found out he was leaving and we didn't know how long he was going. We didn't know when he was leaving. I actually had to cancel the cruise. Um, I had to cancel um, a leadership retreat. I was gonna take some coaches on in February to Mexico because my husband's leaving in February and that's really stupid. So I had to ask them to understand and some of them were upset and they can be upset because I can't change that. I change my business hours and I'm very strict about that. Um, I will not work in the evenings or I will not have calls, I should say. I will work at home, but I have to have my business hours when my kids are at school because from the minute I pick up my daughter, it's go. They both play soccer on two travel teams. They have games at night. They have games on the weekend. We will have no time together and I can't do that to my family. And so if something's got to give, it's got to give. And as, as a leader of an organization, which you all are, your coaches should understand that because we are mostly mothers, um, women, it, you know, we should get that because this business is supposed to fit into your life, right? You're supposed to be able to work it and still have a quality of life. It shouldn't flip the other way. Um, and that's one thing I love about it is I can go pick up my daughter from school every day. I can be available. I can go play tennis. I can stay at home and wait for the repairman. I, I can. And so I've got to be very proactive about those things and a lot stronger and not let people walk all over me, which is what I did the first two years of my business and now it needs to change. So it's, it's finding that balance, but also finding that confidence to say it's okay to not be on 24 hours a day. Yeah. I, I know a lot of people struggle with that. I would say the majority of coaches struggle with that. And I even the other day, Larry told me, he's like, you, you know, when I was working full time, I obviously was working all the time, both jobs. And he's like, now you, it seems like you work more now than you did before. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like, I'm, I'm making a conscious effort to slow it down at nighttime and not be on all the time because same as you, I've let people control my schedule and, things pop up and I feel like I got to handle it. Um, and it can't be that way. It just can't. This, this needs to provide freedom, not just, you know, suck you dry. And as far as the, yeah, I did the same thing with the negative people and giving my all to everyone 
And it just, I, it took me five years to figure that out because I just figured that out this year. <laughs> I, I couldn't get on a call. I was, I was mentally and physically exhausted. And I'm, I'm not an encouraging person. This business has really changed. <laughs> like my kids get hurt and I'm like, rub some dirt in it. You're fine. <laughs> I am not nurturing. I am not touchy feely. And so it's really forced me to find that part of me and to find understanding because in my mind, I'm like, you just do it. You just get up. You just do it. You don't question it to death. You don't beat a dead horse. You just do the dang thing every day because the consistency over time will get you where you want to go. But my friend Amber had a great analogy and I use it a lot. She did this with her business. She imagine there's a, a hill. Wait, hill. I can't do this right. And um, you're you're pushing a car up a hill. A car, something really heavy. If you do it steady, 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 it will continue to go up the hill. You won't be fast, but you'll keep going. What if you stop? That car will roll back on you and you will start at the very bottom. It's the same way with our business. If we're not consistent, if we stop, don't invite for a couple weeks, the car starts rolling back on us. We have got to work twice as hard to get to where we were because we have to then speed up and, and push twice as hard and waste all of that energy instead of just being consistent and doing a little bit at a time. And she did that and she said it was miserable. Uh, she said, I would stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, yeah. instead of just being consistent. And I was frustrated because everybody else around me was growing and she wasn't. And so she understood she had to do those small things daily. Just show up. You won't be epic every day. But then on those days when you are, it makes it all worth it. Absolutely. And like people are complaining about the volume this week. And I'm like, do you remember last week? It's kind of awesome. Yeah. Like really have to. I really have to stop for a second and check myself. Like Christina said, do you understand that we have an amazing opportunity here? And I made $800 a month in my first job and it paid for our rent, our cars, our groceries, our bills, $800 a month. That I made so much more than that in a one week last week doing something I'm truly passionate about from home, helping people. Like, yeah. You have to put it into perspective and that was built on consistency. And so in time it, it gets there. And, um, so there you go. I agree. I see the stop start all the time. I hit success cup 10 one month and then pff, zero. I mean, not me. I've never done that, but I, I through, through time, I, I agree. I've always been, even when I didn't want to, I still did something. I mean, even yeah. it was a little something, I still did something. I never took off a week. I never took off two weeks ever because I agree. It, forget it. You want to move your business forward. You need your, it's an uphill battle. It's always going to be anything you want is going to be uphill. It requires work and consistency through time to get there. You cannot take your eye off the ball. Like Amy and John Addison said this at, at leadership. The only way you coast is downhill. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. You don't coast uphill. No, you're going backwards. So yeah. take your eye off the ball and that's what's going to happen. You're going to hit go backwards. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the last question is just a simple one. And then I just, I don't want to take too much. What time is well, it? Well, I have the nurse coming in seven minutes. So, okay. Well then forget the personal development questions. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions for her while you have her Jeanette? I know Jeanette was going to ask a question. <laughs> Go, Jeanette. All right. I don't know if this is too personal, but what is the average that you spend a month on Facebook advertising? Um, honestly, I stopped doing daily ads. And um, like I said, I will maybe boost two posts. I will post one. Um, I actually did one today because it was my story, and that's personal. Yeah, it was something that's uniquely specific to me. And I thought it was time that people understood a little bit more about me on my like page. So I just boosted that. Um, and then I boosted my challenge group. So I've only done two and it was, I've spent cumulatively $200. I don't spend anything on my Squarespace stuff. How about in the beginning, like on average, how much were you spending? I wasn't spending anything. Um, when I started out, 
like I said, they gave you a credit. It was like a, a gift card. When you hit 100 or 200 people li liking your like page, and they sent me this coupon code, and it was $50, and so I did a dollar a day. And that was it. When it ran out, I was like, oh, crap. So I played with it. I maybe did a dollar. I maybe did $5. But um, it's, it's never been these – huge budgets that you hear people talk about. Now I do have a business coach. She is an entrepreneurial for women. Her name is Sarah Dan, S-A-R-A-D-A-N-N, -N, because I just got that question. She does five free day, free five day mini courses, just kind of help you think about who your target audience is, how to script a per, your perfect story. Um, so I have started investing in things like that, but this is my third year as a coach, and I just started doing that. So I saw people doing like smart success and on conventions. I wasn't ready to do that. I wasn't ready to travel. I wasn't ready to spend thousands of dollars on a business coach or a seminar. And it just didn't work out with our time schedule. Now I decided I want to work one-on-one -on -one with Sarah because I'm at that point. I'm tired of being in groups. I have specific questions and specific needs. But it took, it took getting there. It took a long time to get there. On average, how many emails are you sending to your customers on a monthly basis or weekly basis? I send a monthly newsletter to all of my team and customers. The team one is obviously different than my customers. And that's just once a month. If there's something special like the holiday thing, I will do a separate newsletter. Um, and that newsletter is a blog post that I've done. Um, this one specifically talked about the hammer and chisel um, challenge group. It contained success stories from my team, coaching success stories. It also contained a transformation story. It contained a recipe. It contained the links. It, it was everything they would need. And that's everybody who subscribed to my customer or is a customer through Beachbody. So that's just once a month that I do that big newsletter. Some people do every two weeks. I know my limitations and my assistant stays on top of me and um, we'll see if that changes. But right now that's, I'm good with that because it's all I can do. Yeah. When you say you have one-on-one -on -one calls and they're not at night, all my coaches, you know, pretty much work. When are you fitting in the time to do these one-on-one -on -one calls? Um, I use a, a program that Sarah told me about called Calendly. I'll type it um, in here because it's hard for me to say that. Um, it is like um, an auto scheduler for appointments, but I like it so much more because you can set up a 15, a 30. I have a GSR and the links are specific. It's like Lauren Duke backslash getting started right. So a new coach, I'll include that in her welcome. I'll say, okay, here's your welcome information. Here's our team webinar. When you have completed it, let's set up a GSR. Here's the link. You choose. And I have to go in and I have to set up when I'm available. I just had a coach say, I teach. Um, is there anything we can do? And I'm like, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, absolutely. But it's, I'm not going to offer that up for just any Joe Schmo to take up my evening. It has to be worth my time. So Chris is a basketball coach, a women's basketball coach at a university, and he is awesome. I will definitely make time for he and his wife. But he reached out to me. I know he's yeah, almost a ruby. He said successful. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but I made it very clear. I said, I need you to respect my time just as I respect yours. So here are the links. Please sign up accordingly. If you're Emerald above, please sign up for a one-on-one -on -one call. Here's the link. If you are not, you will be signing up for a group call. And then I say, you know, if they're like, I can only talk at night, I'll say, well, go ahead and message me your questions and I'll do a little voice clip or a, a, a video for you. But that's on my time. Awesome. Okay, one more. Sorry, one more. When you said that you actually share your income on your sneak peek, how detailed do you go in there? I'm, I'm very uncomfortable when it comes to money. I talk about the things we're able to do. I talk about um, experiences. I don't give numbers. Oh, okay. um, with my team recently, though, they were all complaining about growth. And, and they, I think they lose touch with the fact that we were there, too. And so I showed, it was last week, because it was the biggest volume our team has ever seen, right? I wanted them to see year one, year two, year three. And I was like, okay, if you don't think that our team is growing, 
or that I don't get it, my volume was a thousand total. Total. I was on a dead, dead inside leg, forgotten, lost. I built the whole team. And they're complaining at all this carryover volume they have. So I had to kind of give a come to Jesus and a smack smack and be like, hello, we've all been there. We get it. But look how fast, quickly, whatever you can grow when you just do those small things. And they were floored. They were like, we need to see more of this. So I was like, okay, I'm willing to do that. But I'm not going to tell you how much I make a week. I just, I think that's icky. Okay. <laughs> that's just me. Anything else? She's got to run. Let's do a picture. No, really. I, she's going to draw blood. Draw <laughs> this out. <laughs> You're like, no, no, no. Thank you. <laughs> Let's do a quick picture before I forget. Oh, yeah. Everybody smile. <laughs> Everybody pretty? Yes? Got it. Yay. Well, thank you so much, Lauren. I don't think anybody has any other questions. Um, I really appreciate your time and thank you for all the information and all your experiences. We really appreciate it. Thank you. You're awesome. You're awesome. I can't wait to hear you now. Yay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Y'all have a sunny day, you punks. All right, guys. Everybody have a great day and let's keep the momentum high this month. It's a really important month. So yeah, it is. It is. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you.